Good morning. Welcome again to another episode, part one, of the National Sculpture Foundation Virtual Reality Painting Tutorials. My name is Kwame Hunt, and today I'll be discussing color mixings in oils. Today we are outside the Empire Sports Club, Bang Hall, just opposite the Sir Frank World's house, where he grew up. One special consideration. All paints have a different temperament and drying process than water-based paints. Acrylic and watercolor, which are water-based paints, tend to have a drying process of five to 50 minutes. Whereas oil paints or oil-based paints tend to have a longer drying process. Using liquid, it can dry probably 12 hours, surface dry, not physically completely dry, but surface dry and using oils with terps 24 hours. So please take these things into consideration and also the environment that you're working in. Sand, dust, grass, all these things can affect your oil painting because of the long drying process. Stuff may stick on your surface of, insects and stuff may stick on the surface of your work. But just please take it into consideration. I will now introduce to you the primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. Ultramarine blue, cadmium red, cadmium yellow. The reason why these are called the primary colors because no other color can be mixed to get these colors. And these colors can develop all other colors on the color wheel, excepting for white and black. The white I have here is a cadmium white, titanium white, sorry, and a lamp black. I will apply some of the paint on the palette. In mixing these colors in different variations, you will get three other colors. These three other colors that I'll be mixing will be known as the secondary colors. When you mix red, equal portions with yellow, you will get orange. You mix yellow with blue. You will get green. You mix red with blue. get violent but first before I go on and just a brief note there are three primary colors there are three secondary colors but I'm going to list six of the tertiary colors but there is a, a wide variation of tertiary colors that can be mixed first I'm going to attempt to mix vermilion vermilion is equal portions of orange and red I'm going to also look at magenta. Magenta is equal portions of red and purple.
I'm going to also look at cobalt violet. I always say violet. Have to add a bit more red. And blue mixed together, violet and blue mixed together. So of course, purple and blue mixed together, get your violet. We're going to look at teal. Teal is blue, ultramarine blue mixed with green. We're going to look at a next color called Chartreuse, which is green and yellow. I'll mix a bit more green first. Through the variation of mixing paint, you can also adjust the values of the hues and the shades of the color. This chartus is could be a good highlight for trees. And the last, amber, which is a mixture of cadmium yellow and orange. Add a bit more yellow. Now that I'm finished uh, mixing my primary colors, my secondary colors, and my tertiary colors, I went on and do a brief sketch of my subject matter. From here now, I'm going to apply paint onto the canvas from the background, where you see here, which is the sky and the trees. And then from there, I've been developed into the middle ground, which is actually the subject matter of the house, the so front world's house, and then in the foreground, which is where you see the grass and the rocks and the little debris that is on the ground. Well, I'm in the process of building up the sky, adding a little white where the edge of the rooftop meets the sky in appearance. And using a scrubbing motion, circular motion, to actually work the white into the blue, but still gently rub the edge of the tip of my brush to create a soft sky. 
So basically, what I'm doing here is just trying to, to develop my colors right now. Um, I'm looking at the roof. I'm trying to get a, a flat tone before I actually introduce detail into the work. With every color you're mixing, I try to mix my color and break it down in stages where you have shadows and you have highlights. So basically, this is the mother color where when I say the mother color, I mean the general color that will be used. But in respect of highlights and shadows, you add a variation of portions or ratios, I should say, into the green to make it lighter. Well, basically, I just building up the background, uh, uh, the, the foliage, the trees about, uh, that are just below the house. Um, through the fact that it overcast, uh, I just generally looking at the browns and blues it's for shadows. And middle grounds, we have the green and teal. And maybe for highlights, um, cat and yellow mix of white background will give you a, a better um, background. But more must consider Different trees has different textures and different strokes to be applied. So let's bear in mind when you are applying your paint over layering from darks into highlights or shadows into tints, right? That um, the strokes of the highlights shall appear more longer on a mango tree than on a bay leaf tree or so that you can see. I have stopped to describe to you what is my intentions that I'm doing today. For the background, where is the trees are, I'm gonna use greens, cat and yellows, and white with the cat and yellows for highlights when needed, and blues and browns for the shadow of the trees when needed. For the house, I will introduce yellow ochre with white, raw umber with cat and yellow with white, burnt sienna is at certain intervals green, brown, and white for the foreground where is on the, where is the grass on the ground. And for certain highlights, I will use white and cat and yellow to get, get sharp contrast from, from light to, to, to dark. Now I've brought this pen to a close. I'd like to thank you for watching another episode from the National Culture Foundation Virtual Tutorials. This class was a color mixing class in oils, and I hope that was informative for you. Please stay tuned for the next episode. Thank you.